morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? I'm sure glad that you're watching and, and uh, are here to be with us as we study about Paul. I sure do miss you guys. I can't wait until we're together again. I said Paul. I really met Saul because right now he's still known as Saul of Tarsus. Occasionally, I have made that mistake as I've been going through my lesson. But right now, he's still Saul of Tarsus. If you remember right, when we first learned about Saul, mm, he was not happy. He was excited to go find all the followers of Jesus and to arrest them and kill them, and even if he didn't do it, he wanted others to do it. He was not being a good person, but he thought that he was. He thought that he was doing what God wanted him to do and that these people were doing wrong. But then we found out that that's not what God wanted at all, and he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And the Bible tells us that he believed and he was baptized and he started mm. living for Jesus. And he started teaching about Jesus. But he had been pretty bad to the church and people were afraid of him. But scripture tells us that as he stayed in Damascus and he was among those who followed Christ, those followers, that as they got to know him, they realized that his heart really had changed. But people were still afraid. And there were people who didn't like it that he had changed. But even so, he was still still had that enthusiasm to do what God wanted him to do. And since he knew now what God wanted for him was to teach about Jesus to the Gentiles, to those people who were not Jews, he was excited to do it. And he wanted to get out and get started. And he wanted to go in where the people were. Well, Damascus had a lot of Israelites or Jewish people. So there were lots of synagogues. So Paul, Saul, headed for the synagogues so that he could teach the people, that he could tell them that Jesus is the Son of God, that he's not was the Son of God, but that he is, that he ascended into heaven, and that he is there waiting for us until he comes back to get us, or... Um, you know, that the plans of the Jewish leaders to kill Jesus and eliminate the church did not happen. And in fact, the church was growing. It tells us that people would look at each other and say, Whoa, is this guy, that guy who made havoc at the church in Jerusalem? And they'd listen. And many believed and were baptized. But there were some people, as you can tell by our picture, that were not happy. Scripture tells us that Saul was in Damascus for quite a while. And in fact, in his letter to the Galatians, he wrote that he did not go straight way back to Jerusalem. And later on, we find that it was actually about three years before he goes to Jerusalem. But instead, he went into Arabia and then back to Damascus. In 2 Corinthians is where he tells us about that three years. But the people who were not happy, they were more angry with him. And still, they really upped their game to try to get rid of him. So they put spies throughout all the city gates, waiting to see when he was to trying to leave the city. They also, evidently, it tells us that um, 
it was going to be lawful that they had somehow convinced the governor that he needed to be gotten rid of. And most likely this particular governor was one that he would do whatever the Jews wanted him to do so that he could keep peace. Well, God wanted Saul to be warned of the plot to kill him. So he told him of a plan for him to leave the city. When it was dark, his friends took him to a window in the city wall. They put Saul in a basket, a big basket, tied a rope on it, and they lowered him down the wall and out of the city. He landed safely, and as soon as he was out, they pulled that basket back up so that there was no sign that they had ever been there. None of the spies nor the soldiers were aware that he had escaped. It was now time for Saul to go back to Jerusalem. And as he walked along the road, thanking God for keeping him safe, he thought about that he knew that there would be some people who were still afraid of him and other people who had been his friends who were angry at him because he now was teaching about Jesus. So he wasn't sure what it was going to be like when he got there. But that did not stop him. When he got to Jerusalem, he still started to teach about Jesus. And indeed, there were people afraid of him and people who were angry with him, but he kept on going and he was preaching. It tells us that while he was teaching and preaching, that Barnabas heard about him and he came to where he was and he welcomed him as a brother and took him back to the other apostles where he met with them. And he told them how Saul had met the Lord on the road to Damascus and how that he had spoken with him. Saul, while he was there, went out again among the people of Jerusalem, boldly preaching. But again, people, there were those that wanted to get rid of him, and it became not safe for him there. So his friends took him to Caesarea, where he could safely travel back to his home in Tarsus. And so they set off and he traveled back. We're then told that after this time that the church went through a very peaceful period. And in fact, this is from scripture. It says, so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and were being built up and walking in fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. It was a time of peace and a time of growth. That's where our story ends today, but it will continue on as we learn about how the church grew and the trials that they faced in that early time. Um, I hope that you learned a lot from this story and i'll be glad to hear from you please let me know if in the comments if you have uh liked the story and that you watched and uh let or let some of the other teachers know we'll be so glad to see you so bye for now and we'll see you next week bye